A food stall explosion, Sean was severely burned, while I only injured my arm. The doctor treating my wound said. There aren't many people these days who are willing to risk their lives for their wives, young lady, you should cherish that. I smiled and remained silent. In the instant of the explosion, Sean clearly let go of my hand, rushing into the fire to protect someone else. Later, he explained. Saving people is a firefighter's instinct. We've known each other for seven years, and I've always trusted Sean. If the person he risked his life to protect wasn't Kate, I would have believed it. Chapter 1 Seven years of acquaintance, three years of marriage. An accidental explosion finally made me realize that the person Sean was willing to sacrifice for was no longer me. On our wedding anniversary, a rare day off for Sean, he said he would take me to eat something good. Since retiring from the military, Sean had started his own business, and it had been a long time since we had a carefree shopping trip like this. He took me to a night market in a university town, and we sat down at a skewer stall. I glanced at Sean in surprise because I have a weak stomach and he never let me eat spicy food. Sometimes when I snuck a bite, he would get angry and say I didn't take care of myself. Watching the bubbling red soup in front of me, I thought Sean must have been too busy lately to overlook these details. My stomach was indeed uncomfortable today, but to not spoil the mood, I took a few bites. Through the misty steam, Sean was sweating profusely. Even after retiring, he still insisted on exercising, his well-defined muscles showing through his t-shirt. His broad shoulders, narrow waist, neat haircut, and 1.85-meter tall figure made him particularly eye-catching sitting on the roadside. Amanda, eat more. Sometimes delicious food is hidden in these street-side eateries. Look, it's so popular here. What's it called? Right, worldly pleasures. I nodded with a smile and took the beef skewer Sean handed me. I was puzzled by celebrating our wedding anniversary at a roadside stall, but what surprised me more was Sean, who usually had a rough demeanor, saying. Worldly pleasures. Looking at him, I suddenly felt that the person who had been by my side for seven years seemed a bit unfamiliar at that moment. Suddenly, flames accompanied by a loud bang shot up into the sky. Before I could understand what was happening, a wave of heat hit me. I instinctively reached for Sean's hand. But the next second, he let go of my hand and rushed toward the center of the fire. Sean. I trembled all over, and even my shouting sounded different, but Sean seemed not to hear as he charged towards a person slightly ahead of us, holding them tightly in his arms. People finally reacted. There was an explosion at the streetside eatery, causing severe casualties among the customers and staff inside the shop. We were sitting on the roadside across from the shop, so our injuries were not severe. Sean ran out holding the person in his arms. I saw that the clothes on his back and arms were already burnt, revealing patches of bright red burns. In a moment of urgency, I wanted to check his injuries but was frozen in shock the moment I saw the person in his arms. Kate was pale, now lying in Sean's arms, visibly frightened, trembling uncontrollably. It's okay, Kate. It's okay. Sean gently patted her back, soothing her in a soft voice, completely ignoring his own injuries. Calmed by Sean's reassurance, Kate gradually regained composure but burst into tears upon noticing Sean's injuries. What do we do? Sean, you're badly hurt. She trembled and hesitated to touch the wound, eventually falling on Sean's face, full of worry and self-blame. I'm fine, as long as you're not hurt. Thank goodness I came today. Sean suddenly remembered me, looking around a bit flustered. After seeing me not far away, he awkwardly shifted away from Kate's touch and walked towards me. Chapter 2 Amanda, are you okay? He nervously took my hand, his gaze scanning my body, finally settling on my bleeding arm. Following his gaze, I realized that my arm had been cut by something, bleeding profusely. But before, I didn't even feel any pain. After all, compared to emotional pain, physical pain seemed insignificant. You're hurt, does it hurt? Amanda. He furrowed his brows, wanting to help me with the wound. I took a step back, avoiding his hand that had just embraced someone else. Sean was taken aback by my reaction, looking at me with surprise. 
At this moment, Kate finally stumbled over, looking at me in shock, saying. Amanda, you, you're here too? Why? Can't I be here? She probably realized she misspoke and quickly explained. No, I teach dance classes here every week, so I was passing by. Just didn't expect you, you guys also like this hot pot place. She explained in a flustered manner, while I just smiled at her, deliberately ignoring Sean's concerned gaze on my arm. We're really unlucky, especially Sean, who is so badly injured. Speaking of Sean, tears welled up in Kate's eyes, her concerned gaze wandering over Sean's body. The ambulance had already arrived, Kate pulled Sean's arm, asking him to go and let the medical staff deal with his wound first. But Sean, staring at me, said. I'm fine, Amanda is bleeding, she needs bandaging first. Then he helped me into the ambulance, not even looking back at Kate. A few injured elders in the ambulance looked at us and said. Oh, this young man, he rushed over in an instant, holding the girl tight. Look how caring he is, a true gentleman. From then on, the story of Sean bravely protecting his wife spread among the injured, and people looked at us with approving smiles. But no one noticed that the person he was holding at that moment wasn't me. I neither admitted nor denied it, but Sean was embarrassed and restless. Amanda, saving people is a firefighter's instinct, you know, I didn't think much at that time. Sean explained quietly to me. Suddenly, I felt like laughing, and I actually did. An instinct? I suddenly remembered when Sean and I had just met, an electric car had gone out of control and was heading towards me. He pushed me away, scraping his own leg. I was heartbroken and tears streamed down my face, but he said. Silly girl, saving your loved one when danger comes is everyone's instinct, and my body is fine. If it had hit you, you might have broken a bone. Do you want me to carry you every day? I'd be willing. He blushed as he comforted me, getting shy towards the end. At that time, I felt that Sean was someone I could spend a lifetime with. But loving each other is easy, staying together is hard. Ultimately, the person who would love me with their instinct for life would also use their life to love someone else. Perhaps my laughter was too mocking, which made Sean angry. Amanda, what do you mean? Do you suspect me and Kate? Others don't know, but you don't know either? When Peter left, the one he couldn't let go of was Kate the most. They were supposed to get married, if it wasn't for. By the end, Sean showed a pained expression. I knew he had fallen back into that painful memory. That big fire kept burning fiercely in his heart, never extinguishing. Chapter 3 I met Sean in an awkward damsel in distress situation. Once, I accidentally stepped into a roadside drain, my leg got stuck, and in the end, I had to call 119. Sean was the one who responded. He used tools to remove the manhole cover, fearing that I might be scared, he carefully covered my head with his jacket to comfort me softly, and then personally carried me to the hospital. Sean was already handsome, and that afternoon on his back became the start of my infatuation. Later, he asked for my contact information, and a year later, we naturally got together. Initially, my parents were against it. According to them, Sean was good, but as my parents, they had to consider it for me. Sean's profession was too unique, and they didn't want me to take on that kind of risk. Later, my parents' worries finally came true. It was a nearly two-week-long wildfire, and all the city's firefighters were deployed to the front lines. As the team leader, Sean directed the team to extinguish the fire in a mountain pass. Due to the complex terrain and strong winds, he divided the team into three small groups to tackle specific areas. However, even though the fire in front of them had been extinguished, the smoke kept thickening. Sean immediately sensed something was wrong, but with visibility too low, he sent team member Peter away from the fire to go up the mountain to check the situation. After Peter left, a backdraft explosion occurred, Sean ordered the team to retreat, but then he realized that due to a change in wind direction, the fire had encircled them from another side. The whole mountaintop was covered in thick black smoke, where was Peter? Sean desperately rushed towards the mountaintop and was eventually carried down by his team members. That wildfire took the lives of more than 10 firefighters, including Peter. Later, Sean cried and told me. 
He was the youngest brother in our team, about to get married to his girlfriend, it was me, it was me who caused this to him. Despite the department's investigation concluding that the fire changed too rapidly at the time and it wasn't Sean's command error, Sean couldn't get over that emotional hurdle and chose to retire early. At Peter's funeral, we met Kate for the first time, a girl as delicate as a lilac flower. She was so pale, so fragile, as if she could shatter at any moment. During the funeral, she fainted and was rushed to the hospital. Later, we found out that after Peter's accident, she stopped eating and drinking, just sitting in their bridal chamber staring blankly. I heard that she and Peter had been childhood sweethearts, Kate's mother suffered from a mental illness, originally Peter's parents did not agree. But the two of them had been in a long-distance relationship for 10 years, finally convincing their parents to agree. But fate, like a cruel jester, shattered everything before happiness could arrive. At that moment, as I watched Kate weep silently on the hospital bed, my heart was truly breaking. Kate's parents were not around, so Sean ran around handling the hospital matters, discussing treatment plans with doctors, and asking about precautions. The doctor said Kate has strong suicidal tendencies and needs psychological intervention, but she must cooperate for it to be effective. Sean, who has always been carefree, entered the ward with a bouquet of chamomiles. He looked at Kate seriously and said, Peter used to love placing these flowers on the table, we used to tease him for being effeminate, but he would shyly say that Kate loved chamomiles the most, she was as resilient and vibrant as this flower. We used to tease him back then, but deep down, we envied him for having such a beloved girl. Peter is gone, and I can't shake off the responsibility. These days, I can't sleep at night, life seems unbearable. Kate, if you want to go find him, let's go together. Kate looked at Sean in surprise, and I was startled in the corner. Sean, I've looked into the matter, this isn't your fault, you have family and loved ones, how could you? Sean placed the flowers in Kate's arms and continued. You also have family and loved ones, Peter must be wishing for you to live strong in another world. If we don't go find him, then let's undergo therapy together. The doctor had already advised Sean to undergo therapy, but he had adamantly refused. I couldn't believe that now he was willing to seek help for Kate. Kate, holding the flowers, finally found an outlet for her emotions. She threw herself into Sean's arms and cried loudly, crying until she was exhausted in the afternoon. When I returned with dinner, Kate was already asleep in Sean's arms. Sean gestured for me to be quiet, carefully laid Kate down, covered her with a blanket, and left the ward. She agreed to undergo therapy. He smiled, the first time he had smiled since the incident. Why did you say those things just now? Talking about finding Peter, you scared me. I scolded him. I lied to her. Sean avoided eye contact. At that moment, I felt that everything Sean did was a display of responsibility as a man, without any doubt. Chapter 4 That day, Sean explained many things to me, and I listened without arguing. His injuries were serious, requiring hospitalization, and I continued to shuttle between home and the hospital to take care of him. On the third day of Sean's hospitalization, Kate came. I had prepared soup at home and as soon as I arrived in the ward, I saw Kate feeding Sean through the window. Sometimes food would stick to his mouth, and Kate would naturally wipe it off with a tissue. The two of them were focused on each other, speaking softly, with gentle smiles. I stood outside the door with the food container for a long time, as if afraid that entering would disrupt the atmosphere or confirm the thoughts in my mind. It wasn't until I heard Kate timidly ask. Sean, if you could do it all over again, would you still leave Amanda and come to me without hesitation? Sean looked directly into Kate's eyes, paused for a moment, and replied. Kate, just remember, as long as I'm here, I won't let anything harm you. But, Amanda. Kate hesitated. Upon hearing my name, Sean paused, then said softly. As long as you're alive and well, that's all I need. Kate hugged Sean tightly, crying. I know, I know, next time you can't be that foolish, seeing you hurt scared me to my core, I'm so afraid that even you. I've died once, I won't allow you to abandon me like Peter. By the end, she was sobbing uncontrollably, and Sean's eyes were also moist. The nurse attending to the bed came to change the bandages, pushing the door open without noticing me outside. 
I stood at the door, feeling helpless and nowhere to hide. In that small ward, it felt like a public execution was taking place, and I was like a prisoner tied to the scaffold waiting to be slaughtered. I wanted to loudly question their intimacy, I wanted to hysterically cry out about Sean's unfaithfulness, I even imagined myself rushing in like the main wife in a TV drama, catching the mistress, and starting a fight. But suddenly, I seemed to have lost all my strength, even my breathing became unbearably heavy. In the end, I couldn't say a word, so I turned around and fled in despair. Sean shouted my name loudly from behind, as if he wanted to come after me, but he was stopped by the nurse changing the bandages. It wasn't until I ran out of the hospital gates that I realized tears were streaming down my face. The soup I tightly held in my hands had spilled all over, as if I had poured out seven years of emotions. My clothes were soaked through with soup, a greasy dark yellow mess. I suddenly felt my stomach churning, bending over and violently vomiting. Sean's phone kept ringing, and I kept tremblingly hanging up. I didn't know what I was afraid of, whether it was Sean's flimsy explanations or my misplaced seven years of sincere feelings. I hated my own weakness, and I hated Sean's deceit. If he loved Kate so much, why did he pretend to love me, letting me drown in false happiness? I didn't go home, instead, I found a hotel, took a fierce shower, and fell into a deep sleep. I woke up in the early morning, the whole world eerily quiet. Everyone was asleep, but my mind was unusually awake. I opened my phone to over a hundred missed calls, besides Sean, there were calls from my parents. There were also messages from Sean in my WeChat, but I couldn't bring myself to open them until I saw a message from Kate. Amanda, I'm sorry. After Peter left, I was almost like a dead person, it was Sean who brought me back to life. We didn't know how to approach you, but we're sorry. The glaring wees and you everywhere emphasized that I was the extra one in this relationship. I clicked on Kate's moments, only to find that what used to be an empty page was now filled with daily updates. I thought she didn't want to share her life because she was so devastated, but it turns out she had just blocked me. The most recent post was a back view of Sean's injury, with the caption. I'm so afraid you'll leave me too, I don't know what I would do without you. Sean commented below. Don't think too much, go to bed early. Scrolling back further, I saw a photo collage with the caption. Eating street food with the one you love is the best kind of joy in life. In the photo, his big hand still had our wedding ring on it. Chapter 5 I almost masochistically scrolled through Kate's moments from start to finish, as if watching a grand love story. Only, the main characters were her and Sean. Memories flashed before my eyes, and all those subtle clues finally pointed to the fact that Sean had cheated. After retiring, Sean started his own freight company, and we had our wedding three years ago. On the day of the wedding, Sean drank a lot, surprisingly, Kate did too. Her post in moments read. He says he wants to live up to others, but who will live up to me? That day she drank too much, lost her composure and cried bitterly. Everyone thought she was just sentimental, but now we know it was because of Sean. Sean left midway through the event, and when he escorted her home, I was a bit upset. But after Peter left, Sean took extra care of Kate. I just thought he was trying to make amends. After marriage, Sean became increasingly busy. I never asked him to spend time with me to support his business. The only time was on our anniversary. I prepared a table full of food and informed Sean in advance. But waiting and waiting, the food got cold, and Sean didn't come back. I sat in the living room until dawn, and Sean came back looking disheveled. Seeing that I hadn't slept, he was surprised and said. Amanda, why are you still awake? I'm sorry, my phone died, and I suddenly got a call from Kate. She wasn't feeling well, and since her parents aren't around, no one else could help her but us. He kissed my forehead lightly, reheated the food himself, held my hand, and said the day wasn't over until dawn. That midnight, we had a truly meaningful candlelit dinner. In the stillness of the early morning, Sean hugged me and said. Amanda, being with me has made you suffer. Once my company stabilizes, I'll take you anywhere you want to go and be with you every day. Such vague promises could make those immersed in love feel ecstatic. I knew Sean couldn't be with me every day, but I was still blissfully happy in his tenderness. 
But now I know that day Sean did accompany Kate to the hospital, but Kate was crying uncontrollably. Her social media post was a photo of hands wrapped in bandages with the caption. Clearly, you don't belong to me, yet I still hope you'll stay. It's my own overestimation. Sean commented. I'm sorry. I'd rather you hit me than see you cry until you hurt yourself. He said the same thing to me. It was after my first pregnancy in marriage. Severe morning sickness led to low blood sugar, and before fainting, I struggled to call Sean. No one answered for a long time, and when I tried calling my dad, I had no strength left. Ultimately, due to not receiving timely medical care, the child only stayed for two months. The doctor comforted me, saying it's natural selection, and I was young with many opportunities ahead. During that time, I cried all day, and Sean, feeling sorry for me, held me and said. I'm sorry, I was too busy with work to answer the phone. I'd rather you hit me than see you cry until you hurt yourself. Amanda, listen, we'll have children in the future. I'll always remember that day, so when I saw Kate's social media, I immediately noticed that Sean was with her. The post showed Kate lying in a man's arms with disheveled hair, the man bare-chested. Even though his face wasn't visible, the mole on his collarbone made me realize it was Sean. The caption read. I love all of you, from flesh to soul. Only by feeling your heartbeat can I be sure I'm truly alive. It was more of a love record than sharing life. Her long private social media was now open to me. Though I knew her intentions, I couldn't help but get deeply involved until my stomach cramped, and I ended up vomiting violently. After expelling what little food was left in my stomach, all that remained was a bitter acidic liquid. Suddenly, I felt dizzy, broke into a cold sweat. The feeling was all too familiar, and I realized my menstrual period hadn't arrived this month. I struggled to grab my phone, bypassed the pinned message from Sean, and called my dad. Chapter 6 In the doctor's office, the doctor held the report and said. You're pregnant. Do you want to keep this child? When I hesitated and didn't speak, his attitude turned colder. Think carefully before deciding on a treatment plan. My parents were anxious and kept saying from behind. Yes, we want it, doctor. Seeing their happy faces, I silently listened to the doctor's instructions. Given my experience with the first pregnancy, the doctor recommended that I be hospitalized for intravenous fluids to stabilize my blood sugar first and then gradually adjust. Afraid that my parents would worry, I didn't tell them about this explosive incident, so they informed Sean and his parents. Sean almost rushed into the ward, and when he saw me on the hospital bed, his eyes red, he wanted to hug me. Amanda, you're pregnant, why didn't you tell me? These past few days, I. He noticed his parents were present and hesitated. Great, this is really great. This time you must take good care of Amanda for me, you rascal if anything goes wrong, it's all on you. Sean's dad said excitedly. Sean's mom slapped him. Stop talking nonsense. This time it will definitely go smoothly and safely. What's more troublesome about divorce than breaking up is that it's no longer just about two people, but two families. Sean's parents have always been very good to me, and now seeing the four elderly people, my heart was filled with bitterness and words were hard to express. Mom, Dad, I'm fine, it's late, you should go back first. I forced a smile. After Sean sent them off, he brought back my favorite lean meat kanji. Amanda, this is great, this time I'll take good care of you. Don't throw tantrums like a child. I'll go crazy if I can't find you. He carefully scooped up the kanji, cooled it down, and brought it to my mouth, just like before. I didn't open my mouth, just stared into his eyes. Eventually, he started feeling guilty under my gaze, made an excuse to go wash the fruit, and tried to leave. I'll go crazy if I can't find you, then went to see Kate's performance, right? Today, Kate's social media showed a photo of her standing on stage in a red dress, holding flowers. Caption, dancing under the gaze of love, is the happiest thing in my life. I had just liked her post. Sean stopped in his tracks, looked up suddenly, and his eyes were incredulous. Amanda, did you snoop on my phone? No imagined guilt or apologies, just a question. 
Why do men always think they can get away with it seamlessly in these situations? Sean's reaction was just like any other cheating man's, getting angry when caught. I raised my own phone and looked at him, saying. You don't think her social media is visible only to you, right? Sean panicked. He tried to explain several times, but in the end, nothing came out. Perhaps he thought the reasons were unbelievable even to himself, and speaking them out loud would just make it a joke. Let's get a divorce. I had rehearsed this sentence countless times in my mind and finally managed to say it calmly. Sean suddenly knelt in front of my bed, panicking, saying. Amanda, I still love you, I really love you, I beg you, don't leave me. We still have a child. He tried to grab my hand, but I dodged it. Sean, how long do you plan to deceive me? Why didn't you just tell me directly that you've fallen for someone else, afraid that I would cling to you and not let go? You keep saying you love me, so what about Kate? You make me feel absolutely disgusted. Although I tried to suppress it, the last question still carried a hint of tears. I always wanted to not end up looking too pitiful in the end, but I forgot that I had already lost so miserably in this marriage. Chapter 7 When I mentioned Kate, Sean painfully grabbed his hair and hung his head in defeat. She, she is Peter's fiancé, Peter is gone, and I. Sean, are you lying to me or lying to yourself? Are you really just taking care of your brother's fiancé? Taking care of her in bed? I interrupted his pale explanation. I'm sorry, Amanda, I'm sorry, I only wanted to do right by my deceased brother at first, so I responded to her needs, you know? Kate was severely depressed, she couldn't even dance for a while, and as I saw her slowly regain some vitality, I felt like I was slowly repaying my debt to Peter. Later, I realized that all I thought about every day was how to make her a little happier, a little healthier, until I realized that our relationship had undergone a fundamental change, but it was too late. Kate had fallen in love with me. Losing Peter had already destroyed her once, and I couldn't push her into the abyss again. She's a fragile girl, like glass, and I couldn't bear to push her away, she would die. I know I made a huge mistake, but I couldn't confess to you because I didn't want to lose you, to lose our home. Amanda, please give me a chance, I will explain everything to Kate, no matter how much it takes, I will do my best to make it up to her. I listened silently to Sean's explanation, unable to understand why he was still holding on when I had already let go. Before I could say anything, a wave of nausea hit me, and I ran to the bathroom and vomited. Sean followed me closely, patting my back and handing me water. At that moment, his phone rang. He hesitated for a moment, then answered it. Amanda, Kate is in trouble, I have to go check on her, wait for me, wait for me to come back and explain everything to you. Sean said and hurriedly left the hospital. I opened my phone and saw Kate's social media post. The dream in this world is about to end, I should leave too. The picture showed a wrist bleeding. I turned off my phone, turned to find my doctor, and scheduled the earliest surgery for tomorrow. Whether Kate was truly depressed or pretending, I didn't want to investigate anymore. Sean's choice had already given me the answer. Before this, I was still hesitating about the fate of this child. I even thought that even if we divorced, I could raise this child on my own. But now, I didn't want to have any more entanglements with Sean. Because of the deep love I had given before, now I felt particularly disgusted. Perhaps feeling that posting on social media wasn't direct enough, this time Kate sent me a direct message. Amanda, I can't live without Sean, please, I beg you, spare us. Without Sean, I will die, and he will love me forever, just like Peter. I didn't respond, feeling sad about the surgery the next morning. I remembered Sean kneeling in front of my parents, saying I was his most precious person, and that he would protect me with his life. After my parents agreed, he held my hand and ran out like a child, shouting without caring about his image. I'm going to marry Amanda. I'm going to marry Amanda. When I think back, he truly loved me at that time. But that boy who used to cheerfully love me eventually changed. Chapter 8 I spent a sleepless night, and Sean indeed did not come back. At 7 o'clock, I was pushed into the operating room alone. The cold anesthesia injected into my body, I personally killed our child. 
Strangely, despite not feeling anything physically, my heart ached so much it was almost suffocating. The stainless steel instruments pulled and tugged inside me, as if trying to extract my soul. After the surgery, I almost crawled to the ward by myself, bent over. I sickly waited for the effects of the anesthesia to wear off, hoping the pain could alleviate the guilt in my heart. When Sean arrived with breakfast, I was lying in bed, sweating profusely from the pain. He was shocked, dropped the breakfast, and hurried to call the nurse. Doctor, doctor, come see what's wrong with my wife, she's in so much pain, is there something wrong with the child? The nurse on duty rushed in, took one look at me, and then irritably said to Sean. What are you shouting about? Didn't she just have a miscarriage? What child are you talking about? The nurse turned and left, leaving Sean standing dumbfounded at the door. He incredulously looked at me, then slowly squatted down, holding his head and crying in pain. Amanda, why didn't you wait for me to come back? I said I would handle it, how could you abort the child on your own? That was our child. Amanda. He cried out in despair, wanting to come forward and question me, but upon seeing my pale face, he raised his hand and slapped himself hard. Go, the divorce agreement will be mailed to your company later, how to divide the assets will be as agreed, fortunately we don't have children yet. I felt a sharp pain in my lower abdomen, my voice trembling uncontrollably, my smile on my face bleak and forced. After a long time, he looked up, his eyes full of pleading. Amanda, I'm sorry, we will have children, I just want you to be okay. I've already talked to Kate, we won't get divorced, okay? Sean's tone was devout and humble, but I felt a surge in my stomach. Sean, let's keep some dignity for each other. If you don't want to embarrass our parents, I don't mind confronting you in court. Or do you want a bigger share? Finally realizing I wasn't just throwing a tantrum, Sean slammed his fist hard against the wall, leaving behind fresh blood stains. Wait for me. Leaving behind those cryptic words, he decisively left. After Sean left, my parents came to see me. I voluntarily told them everything that had happened recently, including about the child. They were first angry, then heartbroken. My mom hugged me, tears streaming down her face, and my dad just sighed. Amanda, come home with mom. Let's talk about everything at home. With tears in my eyes, I nodded, and all the grievances were finally released in my mother's embrace. After being discharged, I went straight home. The divorce agreement written by the lawyer had already been sent to Sean's company. Sean never contacted me again, but my dad called his parents and scolded them. I heard Sean's dad fainted and was hospitalized in anger, but all of this no longer mattered to me. After fully recovering, I greeted Sean and returned to our home to prepare to move my things. Regardless of how this property is handled, I don't want to live here and feel disgusted anymore. At the head of the bed, there was a large wedding photo. Sean and I were smiling from ear to ear, and in the drawer lay the diary we wrote together during our passionate days. What used to be a cozy nest now seemed filled with irony. I quickly packed my documents, jewelry, and cosmetics, getting ready to leave. As I heard the door opening, I thought it was Sean returning, planning to discuss the divorce process with him. But as the door swung open, it was Kate who entered. Chapter 9. Kate didn't seem surprised to see me, as if she had known I would come today. However, it still irritated me that she was entering so boldly before our marriage with Sean had ended. Initially, I believed that the comings and goings of relationships didn't need to be fixated on another woman. But at that moment, looking at her confident gaze, I couldn't contain my frustration. Before Sean and I divorce, you should have knocked on the door. I said coldly, not in the best mood. Kate looked up at me, not angry, but with a hint of determination in her eyes. Amanda, three years ago, I stepped back and let Sean marry you. I struggled painfully for three years because of that decision, and now it's time to settle the score. Holding on to Sean with marriage won't lead to a good outcome. It's better to let go. I thought Kate might feel guilty towards me, or at least shame for being the other woman. I never expected that in her mind, my marriage with Sean was some kind of charity from her. I smirked inwardly, looking at her as I said. Kate, when Peter had his accident, Sean and I spent so much time and effort to help you get back on your feet. 
If you had any conscience, you wouldn't treat me like this. Being directly called out, Kate felt a moment of embarrassment, recalling the past. Her face turned pale as she trembled and spoke. I couldn't help it, I really couldn't. When Peter left, Sean appeared. Isn't that fate? Sean said he would take care of me on behalf of Peter. If it wasn't for you, if you weren't here, it should have been me who married him three years ago. Just like before, whenever Peter was mentioned, she lost control of her emotions. Sometimes I even wondered if she loved Sean or just a substitute for Peter. We've been together for three years. Do you really think he only feels responsibility and guilt towards me? Truth be told, I sent Sean divorce papers a while ago, but he hasn't responded. I don't understand why. Do you know? Kate naively believed she was the perfect victim, unable to be with Sean due to my existence. Hearing my words, cracks finally appeared on her beautiful face, and she glared at me fiercely, saying. Impossible. It was you who refused to divorce. You used the death of that child to threaten Sean, which made him say he wanted to break up with me and compensate me. Compensate? <laughs> he actually said he would compensate me. My Peter would never treat me like this. Why does Sean think he can? The more she spoke, the more agitated she became, her entire body shaking violently. I didn't want to engage in a drama of the other woman and the wife tearing each other apart. I grabbed my things and turned to leave. Tell Sean I'll be waiting for him at the civil affairs office next Monday. After saying that, I tried to bypass Kate and leave, but she grabbed me and held on tightly. What do you mean? Do you think Sean loves you? Let me tell you, he loves me. Just like Peter, he only loves me. Like on the day of the explosion, he would only rush to me. Kate seemed crazed, her frail body surprisingly strong, as she pulled me back and took out a clear glass bottle from her bag. It's almost time. She said, glancing at the clock on the wall. Then, she forcefully pushed me back onto the couch and with all her might, smashed the glass bottle on the floor near the door. With a crisp cracking sound, a strong smell of alcohol rushed into the nostrils. Trembling, she pulled out a lighter and looked at me, saying. Guess, will he save you or save me? The elevator rang, and Sean shouted my name as he went upstairs. Amanda. Be careful. As he spoke, flames shot up into the air. Chapter 10. Kate didn't bring much alcohol, but she sprayed it all at the door. The entrance was already blocked by the fire, making it difficult to escape. In the scorching heat and choking smoke, Kate frantically shouted Sean's name. Sean, save me, I'm here, you promise that as long as you're here, I won't be harmed, Sean. I pulled her into the bathroom, not because I wanted to be a saint, but because I couldn't bear to watch someone burn to death in front of me. Amanda, he will definitely save me. Kate said firmly, looking at me. Save you. Save you. He can only save you if he's alive, you're insane. I impatiently shouted. I regretted the two sentences I just said to her. Who knew Kate would go this far? I didn't doubt that Sean would save her, after all, he had done so before. I tore off the towel on my head, soaked it quickly, wrapped it around myself, and called the emergency number. Save yourself, that was my only belief. At that moment, Sean burst in through the door, grabbed me in the smoke, wrapped a fire blanket around me, and lifted me up. Sean. Cough. Sean, I'm here. Kate's shouts behind us were intermittent, but Sean didn't stop. I only felt the scorching heat all around me and the choking air. Hold on, Amanda, you're doing great. Sean said with effort above my head. Suddenly, I remembered the fire drill Sean had done with me alone, hiding in the bathroom waiting for rescue in case of a fire. That day, just like today, he rushed into the bathroom, picked me up, and carried me out of the house, except that we were laughing and joking back then, never thinking that such a day would come. Finally, after rushing out of the door, Sean put me in a safe place. At that moment, the firefighters arrived. Sean's clothes were all burnt, with shocking red wounds all over. I was wrapped in a fire blanket, and apart from a little coughing, I was fine. 
I looked up at Sean blankly, not understanding why he saved me first. He seemed to see the doubt in my eyes, smiled, and said. Amanda, I'm sorry, I love you. After saying that, he seemed to want to hug me, but his hand slowly dropped back down. Then he turned around and rushed back into the flames. Sean and Kate were carried out by firefighters. When they emerged, both had lost consciousness due to inhaling too much smoke. The fire was extinguished, and the damage was limited to our family. Three days later, in the hospital. Due to timely rescue, I had been observed and treated for three days and was now able to be discharged. Kate had also woken up. However, Sean was still in a coma. The doctor said his injuries were too severe, and it was lucky to save him. However, he might be left with a lifelong disability. I stood in front of his hospital bed for a long time, recalling the last words he said to me. Perhaps, it's true. But time passed, and we could never go back to the way things were. In this world, only feelings cannot be turned back. Sean's parents were very emotional whenever they saw me, pulling me aside to say that Sean was sorry for me and asking me to give him another chance. I smiled and said to the elderly couple. Uncle, auntie, we can't be together anymore. It's not that I'm not giving him a chance, it's that I can't give myself a chance. After leaving the hospital, the police found me. After understanding the situation, they said that Kate, when she woke up, kept repeating three words. Save me first. The doctor said she needed a psychiatric evaluation. The police looked at me with some sympathy. After all, the family had been set on fire by a mentally ill person, which was indeed an unfortunate incident. The day the results were announced, Sean, who had been in a coma for 10 days, woke up. Chapter 11 When I went to see Sean, it was one afternoon. In the quiet hospital room, Sean was alone, sitting by the bed. The evening sun shone on him, exuding a warm and gentle glow. He smiled and waved at me when he saw me, calling my name as he used to. Amanda, you're here. I sat gently on the chair by the bed, arranging the fruits in my hand. You know, the sunset today is really beautiful, it reminds me of the sunsets we watch together by the sea. Sean, I. He gently interrupted me, took out a stack of papers from the drawer, and handed them to me. It was a signed divorce agreement. When I get discharged, we'll go to the Civil Affairs Bureau. His smile was gentle, as if he was saying that when he got out of the hospital, he would take me to a small cafe. My Amanda deserves a better life, and the mistakes I made, let me make up for them myself. Leaving Sean's hospital room that day felt like saying, goodbye, to an old friend of many years. It wasn't as sad, but there was an indescribable sense of loss. After all, those memories woven together with Sean would probably take a long time to forget. Kate's evaluation results came out, confirming her mental illness, relieving her of criminal responsibility. The police contacted Kate's family to negotiate civil compensation matters. That day, she sat in a wheelchair, constantly telling her parents that she was getting married, but the person she mentioned as her spouse kept changing between Peter and Sean. Her elderly parents were weak and tearful as they pushed her wheelchair. This child is stubborn. She fell ill after Peter left, but I never expected she would do something so harmful. Although we don't have much ability, we will do our best to compensate you. Since the property there was jointly owned by Sean and me, the police also contacted Sean. In the end, Sean distributed all his property except for that property to me, and he didn't ask for compensation from Kate's parents. That might be his way of making amends. Kate was sent to a mental hospital, where the once graceful girl would spend the rest of her life behind bars. The day I received the divorce certificate was a sunny and beautiful day. Sean was waiting early at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau, just like the day we got our marriage certificate many years ago. You're late he said with a smile. Sorry, traffic jam on the way. We chatted like old friends who had been together for many years, even surprising the staff with our demeanor. After all, at the divorce registration office, our calmness seemed out of place. Amanda, can we still be friends? He asked. Let's not. I have plenty of friends. 
After receiving the divorce certificate, I suddenly felt that all those mixed emotions were no longer important. I was finally myself again. A new Amanda. Just walking down the street, I would carefully avoid the roadside drains. After all, one must tread carefully on the road. One wrong step, and a heavy price will be paid. Sean, Kate, and me.